Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com and it's Tuesday, it's August 23rd. This will be our chart lesson for the day and I wanted to start off showing you the daily charts. You can see the downtrend continues. Today was really just kind of a range day, but notice how we opened. We traded down and we came back and we uh, tested the uh, this is this is basically this midline here is the same as the 21 EMA. So prices came back and tested that and then turned back down and we're still ending with a fairly still there's still 45 minutes to go today. So we could maybe close on the low here before it's over, but we're still closing down today if we close like this or or further down. I guess we could still rally too, but I don't see that happening in the next 45 minutes. I think the downtrend is still in play here, but for the most part, this is just a range day, and it'll be a little clearer when we look at the 2000 tick chart, although it still looks like a relatively down day here on the daily chart with that bar, the way it looks at the moment. Uh, when you see the um, other chart, I think you'll it's clear that it's, it's a range type day. So well, let's flip over there and look at it. Okay, here's a look at our 2000 tick chart. We had this originally this morning. Uh, you can see the clear range here, and it just got tighter. We went into this really tight uh, range. It was maybe 16, 15 or 16 points wide. And I mean, there's just there's not much going on here. The, the overall bias was still down for most of the day, too. So as you notice, it's mostly shorts. There's not a lot of longs in here. There weren't many long opportunities. So... Um, and the overall bias is really still down here. Uh, but early on, this is what it looked like early on. So we had to assume that maybe we were going to get a second leg up here. So measure this leg and look for the measured leg. And then, of course, when we made this leg and then started higher again, you'd look for this leg to be similar to this last leg here. And... We came up short on both of them, but we came up considerably short on this one. So that generally means you're going to have a bigger, you know, a nice sell off to the downside. And you can see we did sell off there rather strongly until we kind of found support. And then just the rest of the day, we just chopped sideways. There's not much here going on here. You can see we are still trying to push lower. Of course, now we're bouncing off the lows. Every time we've hit the high or the low, we've turned. Uh, we did break through here momentarily. Wouldn't surprise me if we don't test that again and push through maybe, but um, there's probably not going to be much more happening this late in the afternoon. So we'll, we'll look at it before the end of the day and see where we end up here uh, by the time we finish the chart lesson. But when we didn't get that second leg up, uh, you would expect a bigger sell off to the downside. And you can see this channel working down. We get a close outside. It takes it a little bit of work, but we make a new low. And then we never could rally out of here. The market just keeps going sideways. So um, I still think the path of least resistance is to the downside. And I still think we're going to retest the original lows on that daily chart. So um, it's taken much longer to start happening than I would, would have expected or predicted. But it's hard to, it's hard to know the timing. That's, that's the hardest part about the price action the chart can tell us something but the timing is what we have to be real careful of and kind of watch so uh, needless to say uh, it's a range day but let's let's zoom in here talk about the trades and we'll uh, we'll wrap this day up you had to be patient this morning because it was real slow this morning there weren't a lot of setups so seven o'clock came right in here just just as we're coming up and making this turn down and that's a second entry short at the key entry point. Plenty of room here. I like that trade. And then um, you get a lower high here with uh, another big bearish bar. So if you want, if you didn't get short here, by all means, get short right here. Uh, you might even argue there's a reversal here. The problem is you got to go short right into that support. It works, but sometimes, I mean, that's dangerous. It could bounce there. And so I don't recommend that entry. And of course, now you had your break and a new low. It looks like we're going to reverse out of there. It, it looked like it was going to set up a reversal pattern. But when you saw these three bars stacked side by side, that's clearly congestion with three matching highs. Don't don't risk that a break above that because you see what happens. It, it It's probably going to go higher here. 
but the problem is it stops you out before it does and that's what you have to worry about with congestion it fails out the top then it fails out the bottom and then it goes where you then it goes higher and it could do that multiple times on both sides before it finally goes one way or the other so it's just it it, it can be you got to be real careful with that congestion i'm not saying you can't there's not ever a time you can't trade it but for the most part uh, especially in a situation where you're looking at a reversal, don't don't risk it. So um, it runs to a new high, and then we turn down. And you can clearly see here we run down. We try to go higher once, twice. And this actually breaks higher on a second entry long. And look at that big bullish bar. You know that probably traps people when it breaks higher and then turns and goes down like that. I'd, I'd probably enter that on the engulfing bar, to be honest, although it is a little does look a little congested so maybe you wait for that bar to close just to be sure and then put a sell stop underneath it and then you know, within a few minutes it it, it it bounces some but it takes on off and I would expect that we're going lower here because we're going to make a new low most likely they're going to test or not not that we're going to make a new low because we've already had a break in a new low but they're going to test this low again and see what happens because this would be your ultimate test down here so they're going to test this and see if they can probably get through again since we didn't go back and make a new high you would expect that hey we're probably going to make another leg down here i don't have that one on there but you'd watch for that to retest this and that would have looked something like so but that doesn't end up following through so anyway I always look for those measured legs but we do test this low and make a slightly lower low and then we're reversing out of there no reversal pattern or any real reason to get long just no setup here all the way up and then finally you get a close outside it tries to go higher uh no setup there and then it tries to go higher yet again you you might look at that as a failed second entry long but it doesn't really set up right it should be underneath the ema uh there is plenty of room back there and you probably would expect prices to try to retest this low so maybe you go short there. I just think you're better off to wait. And you can see it runs down, makes a new low, and then we got a new trend headed higher again. And once again, there's no setup to get long here. There's a higher low here, but it's way too far. It's right into the highs. Uh, then you get up here just chopping sideways. It fails out. No chance to go long. And then suddenly you get a second entry short. And you could look at that. There's a double top there. So first entry, second entry. So you could look at that as a failure. That's a big bearish bar. It does close on the other side of the EMA. It's a second ent entry short. I like going short there. And that turns out to be a pretty good move. You'd expect this breakout to fail. So that's what we're looking at there. And it runs down. You could close outside, new low, and then it runs up again. There's actually a close outside a new high here, but that looks congested. It's right into the EMA. Maybe you risk that. You know, you might argue for that to be green, but I think you're better off just to skip it. Turns out to be a really nice move. And then, of course, you run up. You get a first entry, and you run up here, and you get a second entry, and that confirms that trend line. That should be a little lower there. And so that's a second entry short, two legs back to the key entry point. Plenty of room back to the EMA there if you're worried about the EMA. But that definitely confirms that key entry point. I like going short there. There you go. Another great move. And you probably get a runner on this one. Runs down pretty nicely. We're just kind of chopping sideways. You, you can't go short right there. I, I don't think it's worth risk. You see it tried to fail and then turn back down. But there's not a very good setup there to get short. So runs down to the other side. Now you bounce off the lows. And you're working higher and again no reversal here you you want to you want to be careful you want to wait until it gets back up here and look for a short most likely because you do have a channel working down you do uh we did come off a failed breakout to the high side on a range so short is what you should be looking for here and notice that we came up here we got a close outside we actually tried to go higher three times uh so there's you could look at that as a failure and you're Hadn't come back to the EMA in a while, so you might take that trade um, and try to ride it back to the uh, trend line. Oh, I'm sorry, try to ride that back to the EMA. It's a little risky because of the sideways stuff there, 
so you may wait and see if they don't try to test it one more time, which they do. And notice how we run back up. Now you get a triple test across there and a nice signal bar. I like going short right there. Drops on down and, and we're just kind of ranging here. It ends up being two tiered in the end, but uh, we start out in a really tight range and this was the low. And that's also the midline of the bigger range. So pretty interesting that that was a double midline. That's pretty much the line we tested off and on all day the rest of the day. But we came back up. We tried to go higher. You got a failed second entry long there. You got a second entry short. I don't think you want to try to take that as a failure. It doesn't set up right. It's not a good second entry short. Uh, we're not quite back to the highs yet. So uh, a little iffy. Um, it drops on down. And notice how we push through that time and come back. And it kind of sets up a second entry long that fails right there. So if it breaks lower, it's probably going to they probably trap people to push it down and I went back and forth whether or not to make that one green but we still would be looking for a retest of this low and you have to look at this and understand the type of trap because most people are going to trade the, the breakout the smarter traders and so you got to be careful that you don't outsmart yourself here so when it breaks the entry this is actually your signal bar so your safety stop has to go above this bar but your entry would be one tick below that bar, and um, and you would you would expect at least another measured leg down, and you actually get two legs down, and then you get a break, and you get another second entry short here uh, with a big bearish bar. Notice that new low, first entry, then it tries to go higher again, then second entry. The second entry t actually triggered when it broke below that bar, but you can't use that for a signal bar. And so when this one closes on its very low, if it breaks below that, you should get a scalp. And we're still looking for a retest of this low. And notice it runs down. It goes just far enough to get that retest. And then we rally up. But this turned out to be a really nice move down. And then we're headed higher. And we're just kind of, we get back to the EMA. And we're just kind of chopping around. I just don't see anything in there worth risking. Uh, until it runs back up to the highs that one's really tempting but again that's congestion and it could end up tripping you up but when it drops on down and then pulls back right there and turns high it breaks higher and then turns down i like going short there just on the fact that they're going to trap people and we just came off the highs and you know we're at least probably going to go back to the midline and maybe we go all the way to the other side and there's plenty of room either way and this thing ends up just the bottom falling out of it so it turned out to be a really nice move now whether or not you got a runner on that is questionable but most likely not unless you played it played it uh gave it a little room on your safety stop or whatever on your runner so most of us aren't doing that so anyway we found a bottom there's a high or low here, which is tempting. I didn't mark it because we just had to break this, and there's still a chance we might try to push down one more time. If you took that trade, you know, it is a high or low. We still are a ways away from the EMA. Maybe you take it, but you can see it It struggled before it went higher. It would have worked, but I think I would wait. Um, we don't get any kind of reversal or anything. You might have looked at that as a reversal. Technically, it is. You try to go lower once, twice, and it does close above the EMA, but you got all that resistance you got to go long in, and you see it struggles, but it finally pushes through. So, I don't think you want to enter that. Just, just watch prices. Then we come up here, we make a little double top, we get a break, a move to a new high, and then now we got a triple test. You got a new swing low here, first entry, second entry. So it's a second entry short, a triple test. You got a break of the green channel, a new high, and that turns out to be a really nice move down quick, fast, and then it was, next thing you know, it's reversing the other way. And there's another reversal right here, but that's a really big bar. I mean, 15 ticks. I mean, compared to what we've been getting, that's not real volatile. But this late in the day, right into that resistance, I think you got to skip that because you see it does 
fail a few times. And it does, actually breaks out right there. And uh, you get a failed breakout. Uh, if we, plenty of room back to the EMA. So if it breaks lower here, we're probably going to run there. We may run all the way back down. So, um, and you do have a close outside of this green channel and a new high in place. So there's a lot of reasons to think prices may go lower. I marked it green because it is a little sideways. And a lot of times you want to wait on a lower high. But then it runs back up and it just tests this high up here. And, you know, we, look, we've turned down every time we've touched that. So I think that one's worth risking. Uh, because you do have a break and a couple of legs up now. Fairly decent signal bar. Plenty of room back to the EMA. And that would have been a nice trade. That kind of takes you into 230. And I mean, we only don't... The key, the, our rule basically is we don't enter any new trades after 230. Doesn't mean if you had a good runner here, you couldn't manage it all the way down to here. Or wherever. And you can see we're not really... We haven't really done anything since we first talked about that. 15 or 20 minutes ago. Uh, prices aren't even moving. And there's still 30, 25 or 30 minutes left in the trading day. I don't, I don't think we're going to do much from there. I really don't. So, um, pretty good day considered it was mostly sideways. There were still some setups here. Not the e easiest trading day, but certainly not the hardest either. I prefer those days like we had yesterday where you get a strong trend and it just keeps going and going and going and every rally just gives you a great chance to sell at a key entry point of some kind. So, um, but anyway, not too bad today. At least we had some consistent turns off the highs and runs back and forth from the high to the low. And that's what you need on a range day to really be successful trading it. So uh, I like the way today's set up. But anyway, not much else we can say about it. Uh, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.